Greetings, traveler. I am Snap Jelly, and the swords in Skyrim, are they realistic? Well, there are quite a few sword designs to choose from, so I decided to put them into three categories. The good, the bad, and the what? In this episode, I will talk about the good designs. Each and every one of these weapons either has some connection to a historical design, or even if they don't, would still fare pretty well in an actual battle. Join me in my quest, and I'll tell you why. Now one of the best designs in Skyrim is quite simply the Iron Sword. Yes, I really like this design. This blade has a very realistic width, because most of the swords in Skyrim are very, very wide. This one, however, is not. It looks really normal. It has a very nice taper, and the guard is not overly thick. It's still a little bit thicker than necessary, but at least it looks reasonable. Also, I like the fact that it's curved upwards. This is not necessary, but just, you know, personal little aesthetic that I, that I like. I do want to say, though, that the edge, it looks kind of fucked up. This is probably intentional to make it look cooler or, or maybe just worse because it's not that good of a sword in the game. But honestly, an iron sword really wouldn't have an edge that bad. It would just look smooth like any other sword. The only real problem that I have with this sword, which is something that most swords in Skyrim have, is that the grip is way too long. Now this is especially a problem with this type of pommel. This pommel is quite clearly based, like most things in Skyrim, on the Nordic society, like the Viking style swords. They have these pommels that are really, really straight at, at the part where your hand is supposed to be. But the grips are really, really small on those swords. They are supposed to just fit around your hand, forcing your hand kind of into a specific grip. However, because the grip of this sword is so long, it doesn't do that. And every time you swing it, this little pointy bit is just going to hit you in the arm. Side note, I forgot to mention, in this video I'm only going to talk about the dedicated single-handed swords as described by the game, the one-handed swords. Uh, now, of course, if you would use a one-handed sword in real life, uh, like this, then if there's enough room on the grip, you can always apply a second hand like this. It will give you way more leverage, uh, it will make you way faster, it will make you way stronger, so if you have a hand free, you can always do that. But in the game, this is not an option. Um, one-handed swords are dedicated one-handed swords, you cannot use two hands. Also, like I said, a flat pommel like this is not really comfortable to hold with, with your hand. And this is actually a pretty subtle one. So um, there you go, back to the video. So you could either get rid of this type of pommel, give it more of an arming sword pommel, something that is just not that flat. Or what I would recommend is making the grip smaller. Just like this. It looks way more reasonable, I think it looks way better. Other than that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this sword. You could say that they need to add a fuller, but again that's not necessary because the earlier design of Viking swords used by the Anglo-Saxons didn't have fullers either. So other than that, nothing wrong with it. Great sword. Going on over to the next one, the steel sword. Now if you would compare this to the iron one, you can already see that it's quite a lot wider. It has quite a bit of extra mass here, making it more tip heavy, just less balanced in general, it's not really a good thing. And it is less pointy, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. This is what is called a spatulate point. It's a kind of point that is not particularly pointy, but instead rounded and sharpened all the way. In history, this was used all the way up until the 13th century. It is easily sharp enough to stab someone. And it was also largely used on the Viking swords that these are supposedly based on. So nothing wrong there. What I do mind is this little extending point right here. I mean, that doesn't really do anything. I mean, if enemy blades would slide down, you would just throw them off to the side a little bit more. And that's, that's not really helpful. It, it actually doesn't really do anything. Except it might make parrying actually harder, because in some cases you want your enemy to hit your guard. Also, comparing it to the iron one again, you can see that the guard is quite a lot thicker. Once more, unnecessarily. It doesn't need to be this thick, it's just adding extra mass. But, the grip is a way more reasonable size, and the pommel also looks more comfortable. 
so overall I think this sword is pretty decent. Next one is a more fantasy looking one, Dawnbreaker, yes. Now right off the bat it has quite a lot of added mass right here, very close to the handle, and that would, you know, throw the balance off and change the way that you would handle the sword, making it more of a stabber and less of a cutter. But the reason I think it would work is simply because the blade is once more a really reasonable width. Width. Also, you can see that the sword does not have much of a guard, but in Skyrim they use these round center gripped shields. And if you use a guardless sword with a center gripped shield, there's honestly not much of a problem. You could very much do that. I mean, I would still recommend you have a guard, but you can fight perfectly fine without one. So even if it wouldn't have any magical powers or anything, if you would combine it with a center grip shield, I feel like you could use this blade fairly well. The only real problem is the grip being incredibly long. Once more. Because it's a dedicated one-handed sword, a grip this size will just get in the way. It honestly doesn't help you. Another side note, this is the last one I promise, um, a longer grip on a one-handed sword might seem more efficient to you because I just said that it gives you more leverage and a longer grip will give you even more leverage. But this only applies if you can use the sword with two hands. With one hand it will just get in the way and if you want to use a shield you can of course only use one hand on your sword. You see one of the strengths of a center grip shield is that you can flip it over to the other side. It doesn't always have to protect the left side, you can just flip it over and then it'll protect the right side. Now, if you have a really long handle, ignore the blade for now, just looking at the handle, it can get in the way in various ways. Alright, if you have the center grip shield, and you want to flip it over to that side so you can attack from the left, you have to move your sword over to the left. So, you do that and you hit yourself in the body. Right there. It doesn't work. Now, the other way, if you want to attack your opponent from the left, uh, but going over your own arm, then still you would flip your shield over to this side and you would hit yourself in the arm. Right there. That doesn't work. But if you have a dedicated one-handed sword, neither of these is a problem. Because, well, the grip is short. Alright, uh, this is the last one. Back to the video. Next one is the Silver Sword. Now I don't have very much to say about this because, well, it's a quite normal design. It only suffers from the standard problems like a, like a thick guard and, and a long grip, but the grip kind of looks thicker as well comparative to the rest. Maybe that's just me. Not much else I can say. The blade is not too wide so it doesn't necessarily need a fuller either, so nothing wrong. Great. Another really good one is the Blades Sword. Well, uh, it's a katana, so design-wise, nothing really noteworthy. Except for the kind of oddly folded tsuba, but I don't think that would really be a problem in any way. Once more, there's the thing that it's a dedicated one-handed sword, and, well, if it's really a katana, katanas are kind of two-handed, but uh, you could technically use them with one, so there are some question marks there, but the design is fine, really. Going back to the fantasy designs, the Dwarven Sword. Now this sword is really wide. So it would definitely be a cutter rather than a thruster. And it would take a lot of strength to use, but it does have what looks like a fuller, so I think you would be able to deal with it. It has a teeny tiny little guard, which is better than nothing, and I felt like pointing it out. But the grip seems way too thin, as well as long, of course. And it has these little ridges right there. Yeah, that is just not going to be comfortable to hold. But if you put some leather wrap around that or anything, make it a bit thicker and a bit more comfortable, I feel like you could use this. Next one is the Nightingale Blade. I gotta say, this is a very pretty design. It, it, it looks really cool. It kind of looks like a short sword, but if you would compare that to the player, you can see it's actually huge. Still, the grip compared to the sword is a really normal size and it looks comfortable enough. It also has a really nice taper, I really like the way this blade looks. Just the roundness of the guard is, is kind of a problem. Like, not having a guard is not necessarily a problem, but anything, just a little, little, little spike is still better 
then nothing. And this rounded guard right here would just guide swords directly towards your hand. Anything that slides down your blade will just whoop, cut off your hand like that. If you have a little, little extendy spike, any sword that hits that will still lose all its momentum and it won't be guided directly towards your arm. So anything would be better than this. Still, it looks very pretty though. But the roundness here is a, is a little problem. Although design-wise, it's not, it's not really that bad. If it's a short sword and not incredibly huge, you could use this. Yeah. The last one I want to talk about is the Imperial Sword. Now, when I look at this, I can't help but think of the Gladius. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really look like the Gladius, but it kind of does. I mean, maybe it's just the overall style of the Imperials that makes me think of it, but uh, anyway, just look at this. If you would compare this sword to the Gladius Hispaniesis or something, which is the largest design of Gladius out there, then you can see just how fat this sword actually is. It does have a fuller and it's a little thinner here, but I don't feel like that's enough. It would still be a fairly bulky sword to use. But it actually has more of a guard than an actual Gladius does, so I have nothing to whine about there. So all I can say is slim it down a little bit and get rid of that ridge here, because that is just going to be a pain to hold. So that was it guys, I hope you enjoyed. You can click the screen right now to watch part 2 or part 3. And if you like this video, you might as well subscribe, because you're going to like the rest of my videos as well. Also follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash napjellyarmy, link in the description below, and thank you for joining my quest, and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Bye guys.